Hello everyone, in this video we are going to find out the load carrying capacity of column. This is the numerical on load carrying capacity of column which is also known as design compressive strength of column or design compressive strength of compression member. So let's see the problem statement first. <music> See, the problem statement is design a column with I section with height of 4 meter, factored axial compressive load is 600 kilonewton. Assume both the ends are restrained in position and direction. Now, in previous video, if you have watched the previous video, in that the section was given. Now, this time they have not given the section. Just they have told us that you should uh, use I section and rest of the things that one important thing is load is also given. So we should take that section, that I section, we should have a load carrying capacity greater than this 600 or at least 600 kilonewton. So you have to try that section, we should have the capacity greater than 600. So how you can do such type of numericals? Let me start with the first step that is given data. Whatever is the given, I will write it here. So I'll I'll use I'll write here use I section. You have to use the I section. That is first thing that they have given. Then span is given or length or height is given. It is four meter. And factored axial compressive load that is PU is given. It is how much? 600 kilonewton that is given and they have said that both ends are restrained in position and direction that means both ends are fixed so its diagram will look like this your column it is having both ends fixed and it will look like this so for that we will check what is the effective length i will calculate it here only so effective length will be effective length is equal to it is denoted by what k into l so we have one table that is table number 11 which table is there it is table number 11 i'll write it here table 11 and page number 45 which is code i have used it is is 800 2007 from that if both ends are fixed the diagram is look will look like this for that the effective length is 0.65 l you can see here so i'll put 0.65 times l that is 0.65 into what is the length or what is the height they have given they have given a height of 4000 mm i'm taking it in mm so my effective length will be what it will be multiplication of this 0.65 into 4000 that will come 2600 you can check the calculations so that is what they have given and no other data is given here now let me start with second step so second step is assume lambda or fcd lambda is the slenderness ratio so here i'll just assume lambda value i'll write like this assume lambda is equal to 60 so what you have to do you will have to check a table let me show that table First of all, which one will be the buckling class here? See, buckling class is C here. Okay. Buckling class is what? I'll also mention here assume lambda and FCD and buckling class. So I'll mention buckling class, not C. Let me check it first and then we will conclude whether it is C or B. Buckling class. See, this is your I section. And if you want to try that section, which will generally see for uh, uh, the loads like this 600, 400. 500 kilonewton of load the thickness will be obviously the thickness of flange will not be 40 or it will not be greater than 40 then generally your buckling axis will about yy your buckling of your i section will be about yy axis about this axis this vertical axis so for i section generally the buckling will be about yy axis how it will depend you have to check whether Ixx is greater or Izz is greater or Iyy is greater. Whichever is lesser, 
which ever is lesser that about that axis there will be a buckling okay so i am assuming that it will be about yy so for that the buckling class is b here okay so buckling class is b now if buckling class is b you can easily find out the value of fcd so how you can find out that will be our step third area required so area required how you can calculate that well, let me assume the buckling uh, let me assume first the fcd here see here the buckling uh, sorry the lambda value is 60 and buckling class is b so let me show you one table here first then we will calculate the area required so how you can calculate that let me show you see this is the table it is table number 9b why i am using table number 9b because the buckling class is b here okay so buckling class is b i want to find out the value of fcd that is design compressive stress i am just assuming it so it will be fcd will be equal to see we have assumed lambda as 60 so in 60 column the two in 250 column here because our fy will be 250 so for that the value is 181 here it is so i'll put 181 newton per mm square so this is what value i have assumed now from that i will calculate the area required okay so how you can calculate the area required see it will be very simple area required will be equal to now tell me what is the area area formula we have used it so many times and uh, from where which formula i have taken this area required see if you divide load by stress means what is stress it is force upon area area is taken on this side so area required will, will be pu upon fcd okay so what is the value of pu they have given here it is 600 kilo newton so in newton it will be 10 raised to 3 divided by fcd that we have assumed it is 181 so the area required will be 3 3 1 5 mm square now what i will do i will use or i will assume that section which is greater than this miss i will assume that section which is having the area greater than this so let me show you the steel table see you have to use the steel table here i have just taken the screenshot of steel table here so i'll be using the, this one ishb 150 and its sectional area is 4408 why i am using this because i am using a safe design because in exam if your section is unsafe you will have to repeat the procedure so safe side what you do you just take an area slightly greater than the required see required is 33.15 centimeter square you can divide it by 100 and you will get the value in centimeter square okay so it is 33.15 or 3315 mm square so for that the sectional area here is 44.08 that means it is in centimeter square so in mm square it will be 4408 so what i will write i will write from steel table try ishb which one it is ishb 350 at the rate what is the weight of this it is 34.6 kg per meter because see it is written weight in kg per meter so it is per meter its area area is what it is 4408 mm square okay this much is area it is given in given here okay rest of the properties you can write see they have also given the rxx it is 60 point i'll, I'll write it here rxx it is 60.9 mm actually it is rzz okay rzz rzz is what 60.9 mm and ryy ryy value is what it is 33.5 now i had told you that you should also check ixx and iyy see iyy is what 494.9 and izz is 1635 so which one is less this one is less so your buckling about will be about which yy axis and we have seen for yy axis buckling the buckling class is b that's why i have taken the buckling class as b okay so for i section ishb iswb ismb for that sections generally the buckling class will be what it will be about y y axis buckling axis and your buckling class will be b only that's why i have taken that now let's take the next step let's find out the slenderness ratio so formula for slenderness ratio is see last time we had in last step we had assumed it 
now we have to calculate the actual slenderness ratio so it will be kl divided by r minimum kl we have calculated it is what 0.65 into 4000 that is my effective length you can write like this also le by r minimum what is le it is effective length divided by what is r minimum minimum uh, radius of gyration it was r y y i think let's check it yes it is 33.5 so i'll divide divided by that 33.5 so after the calculations my lambda value will be 77.61 now i got the value of lambda here let's calculate the value of fcd that is design compressive stress so what you how you can calculate that i'll make two tables here lambda and fcd see my lambda value calculated value how much it was it was 77.61 okay so i'll put like this 77.61 61 okay let's check it again yes 77.61 now it lies between what 70 and 80 okay it lies be between what 70 for 70 value let's check see for 70 in 250 column the value is 166 here yes is it 166 yes it is 166 for 80 it is 150 here so you have to find out this value so you can do the interpolation in previous video i have given the formula or you can directly do it on the calci also and but if you want to find out what if you want to know what is the formula for interpolation you can watch the previous video in previous video i have given that that is load carrying capacity of column part uh, means video number one or the numerical number one in that video i have given you the procedure how to calculate the fcd or the i have given you the formula for the fcd okay for the interpolation okay so after the interpolation after the calculations the value will be 153.82 and the unit will be newton per mm square okay see what we have done let me tell you the steps again from this very starting okay see first of all whatever was the given i have written here then i have also calculated the effective length from table number 11 page number 45 of is 800 i have calculated the effective length that is it then i have calculated the value of lambda that is uh, lambda or fcd you can write okay uh, lambda I have assumed 60 and buckling class is B I have assumed from this y, y because buckling will be about y y axis for that let's see the value of FCD it is 181 here and from where I got this I can I can write it here also it is taken from table number 9b page number what page number 41 and I S code is same 800 and 2007 okay then I calculated the area required by formula PU by FCD and I got this much area so I took from steel table the area which is greater than this so I got this much area this one I took this I tried it I have not checked it whether it is safe or not yet okay now I have calculated the slenderness ratio and why I calculated the slenderness ratio because I wanted to calculate the value of FCD so I have calculated that also from interpolation it is 153.82 now only the last step is remaining that is design compressive strength or the load carrying capacity of column so formula for that will be pd is equal to area into fcd see area was assumed as 4408 it is taken from steel table and fcd we have calculated as 153.82 so after the calculations your load will be 578 kilo newton and whether it is greater than 600 kilonewton yes it is greater than 600 kilonewton so you can finally write that section or i section which which section we have tried ismb ismb was which one it was no ismb not ishb we have tried let's check it first then we will write whether it is ismb or ishb let me check that see here we have tried ishb 150 okay so i'll write what i'll write i'll write ishb at the rate what whatever is the kg you can write that from the steel table let me show you that that also 
it is at the rate 34.6 kg per meter okay it's all right 34.6 kg per meter this section is safe it is safe against what for a load of 600 kilo newton okay because our capacity is what it is 678 it is obviously greater than 600 so that is what the answer is we have calculated the load carrying capacity or we have designed the section so we have designed this section to carry this much load okay so this was the video second uh, numerical on load carrying capacity of column thank you